Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and I kind of want to talk about Immortal Empires a little bit. You see, this map has been floating around for almost a month now, it seems, and someone sent it to me very recently, and I looked at it and the first thing I said is, this is what I want. This is what I want by the end of Total War Warhammer 3's lifespan. It's as close to perfection as we could possibly get, because yes, I still believe that this stuff is indeed possible. As map expansions are possible, I don't know why people keep thinking it's not, but it definitely is. So, what you're seeing on screen now is a fan-made map of the Immortal Empires. Pretty much everything that we know right now, but with a few added bits. And the more I look at it, the more I think this is, well, complete. This is just really, really cool, and it's definitely something that needs to happen in the future. Maybe without one thing, but uh, we'll get to that. So let's discuss some map additions, which I think are going to be really needed for the game in the future, just to add in a little bit more. So Indian Koresh are territories that we're expecting to open up in the future, eventually having their own race packs with the Indies and obviously the Qureshi Snakemen, but I doubt that we're going to get those DLCs anytime soon. If anything, they will open it up for minor factions at the beginning just to kind of open things up. As Cafe is right next to it, it's very cramped up. If they add in more of the dragons, they're going to definitely need more areas to expand to. And not only that, but like... In general, it would be nice to have more starting positions, and we're going to get DLC. We're going to get, what, three DLCs this year, possibly three next year, or maybe even four, depending on how things go. So the idea is, eventually this map is definitely going to feel a bit full, 86 Legendary Lords at the moment, and it already feels full enough, because everyone's really well spread out, which is a great thing. Honestly, I'm actually quite happy, but... Having a little bit extra, you know, moving Lokia down to in or Koresh and maybe a high off there would be fantastic too, just to have a little bit more freedom, right? I'm not going to criticize the fan map in terms of shape of provinces because in all honesty, it's actually not too bad. And if we look at it realistically, if you take away all the names from the standard map, all the partitions that were done in the fan made mode, yeah, pretty, pretty good. Like everything really fits really well. Um, that would probably take us up to, we probably have, what, 555 settlements right now, they said? So this would probably take us up to 650, I think, more or less? Maybe even a bit less, but more around that same ballpark. Because on average, the provinces usually have around three settlements, some of them could have four. Stuff like that could fit, especially since we've seen the land masses in-game, you can fly over them, you can use a fog of war remover, and it definitely looks like a lot of settlements would fit in there, so yeah, not too bad. Regarding the Southern Chaos Waste, so this one's an interesting one, because a expansion has been done, it's just adding a little bit of extra land in there, which I feel would be kind of useful if another Legendary Lord ends up there. If, for example, we end up with a Beast Fiend, something that we're really hoping for, for the Beastmen, you know, demonic style, half demon and half beastmen and yeah there's already a bit of land there because there's actually a little bit of lip of land which um yeah is not usable which is kind of weird because it's there and if there was no intention for it then i'm not too sure why that was even added in so they've probably got some sort of plan because we do know obviously that between koresh and that little lip there is a, a series of high elf colonies and acts as a guardian ship to the strait and so on kind of like how gibraltar works with morocco and just in general it would be nice to have a little bit more leg room around that area playing as oxyotl or even as uh kairos who's now down there for a while now just to act Actually have a little bit of preparing area you know some territories that you can stage invasions say for example after Ind and Koresh do open up it would be nice if you could move your armies through there and then directly to them well more so Koresh but you know what I mean the steps themselves received a bit of an expansion, same thing as Warhammer Korea, and we're going to put them both here, mostly because we don't know exactly what's there. You see, the law kind of states that sometimes a race of other humans are there, you know, like the Tong and stuff, uh, but really, unless we get like a Tribes of the North situation, I don't think that we might see them. There's also a little bit of lore to suggest that the centaurs still live here. A race of humanoids like human horses, not like bull centaurs, which are obviously chaos dwarfs and not centaurs either, which actually count as beastmen, they don't count as actual centaurs. Um, I don't know. Like, there's a possibility. It could also be that they just move the Hobgoblin Carnet there, because eventually I'm imagining that we might see something to do with the Hobgoblin Carnet. It just kind of makes a lot of sense. Because Games Workshop have been hinting towards them. Every old world post that is 
centered around the Darklands or even in Cafe and so on, there's always a mention of the Hobgoblin Connet. It's obviously a bit of a weird thing and we're gonna have to wait and see. I do really want to know what's in Warhammer Korea. There must be something. There's been speculation for a while that there might be a human nation there and so on. Uh, former breakaway Cafeans. But we don't know and until I guess we get the Cafean army book which is looking like it's going to be like 10 years from now. Good God, they are taking their precious time with Old World. I feel like we won't find out, and even then we might actually just be very lucky to find out. Though keep in mind that we just might get a name when they do a full world map for the Warhammer the Old World setting, but uh, we won't be given any context. One addition here is the Realm of Chaos, which, uh, yeah, they do kind of fit quite nicely in. I know a lot of people have been wanting the Realm of Chaos because... Well, you know, it's kind of cool, you can get some pretty cool items with it, and so on. I really do not think that they would be added in if they have plans for, like, settlements and stuff. I don't think settlements are realistic there, because, let's be very, very honest, I really do not see any race living in there, barring a demon. It's cemented into the law that essentially nothing but demons can live there, and if you're finding yourself in there, you're going to be basically just hunted down until you eventually die. Or you're a space marine with a lot of plot armor. So what could be done is kind of like a dungeon system where you have a chance at a random event and that can pop up a rift inside your territory and you can go in there and do the actual trial. So this would be bringing in the mechanics already available and, you know, it's the usual thing. So in the realm of corn, you have to kill a bunch of stuff and then do a survival battle. Uh, with the realm of zines, you'll have to do that stupid freaking puzzle. I hate it so much. I'm sorry, but I really do. Uh, with the Realm of Nurgle, you'll have to get a antidote and then go to the survival battle. And then with the Realm of Sunesh, you can go down into the rings until you do the survival battle or take the temptation and leave. And I feel like this could be the way for you to unlock an item. Rather than pick up the item that you would normally pick up, say like for example the Realm of uh, Corn, where you just go to one of the corners, this would be wholly focused on you just doing the event, doing the survival battle, you could obviously also resolve it too, and getting a special item because of it, one of the special items that are available through the Realm of Chaos map anyway. And uh, it wouldn't be like the old system where rifts are spawning everywhere and all that stuff, because that would be absolutely horrible, nobody wants that. It would just be a specific rift that spawns in your territory, and you could then do something about it, right? Now, that could also trigger to other factions too, but it would only be one singular rift per faction, maybe just major factions, and it would be on a random interval to make sure that it never happens to everyone at once. You know, a low RNG aspect, just to have the chance of that happening, I think that's probably the best way that they can do that, as... Well, it'd just be kind of cool. You could get all the really cool items that, yes, you can still get them with the Champions of Chaos, but you can't get them with the other factions. Just imagine yourself having the Chainsaw, the Blade of Sunesh, and obviously the Widowmaker all in one playthrough. You would be doing a hell of a lot of damage. So, yeah, I mean, I think that could probably work. Again, I know some people are going to say, well, who cares about the lore? It just doesn't make sense. Just think about it this way. You can't really stick settlements in the Dark Prince's realms. It's just a bunch of rings. So... Already, it would be a bit too difficult unless they redesigned that, which, meh, I don't really see a point. There's obviously enough space. We've all seen those gigantic spaces there in the Immortal Empires map at the top. So, yeah, it's possible. The territory of Nippon looks really nice in this map. It's fan-made, again, I have to keep stressing this out, it's fan-made. But it looks really, really well there. It fits so well. It's not a large country, it's really not a large country, and I think it would be kind of cool to have that opportunity to see Nippon as a DLC in the future. I really do think that Nippon will be a DLC, but it'll be likely like the last DLC that we'll ever get. Uh, then they'll probably move on to like Total War Warhammer 40k, because I still think that's coming. I don't know why, but like, I really, really do think that's coming. But yeah, small country. It's actually not as big as a lot of people think. Easy enough to fit into the map with just a minor expansion, which, yeah, I'd say is possible, especially if it comes down near the end. It's not like a new map is needed. It just needs to expand the map file a little bit. And yeah, then we can get our samurai vampires and samurai zombies and stuff. I honestly think that they'll be the last race pack, mostly because... Uh, the law for Nippon is not really good. There's a lot of stuff which is just done... Really badly, again, it's the thing with Games Workshop staff back in the day not leaving their little borrow, let alone going to a different country. Uh, so after there's a bit of a rewrite, yeah, doable.
And the last country, which is right below, is the Lost Isles of Elephus. It's not really a country, it's more just high oven enclaves, more than anything else. Not really anything there, as far as I'm aware through lore, but this could serve as either a High Elf start position, or Dark Elf, pretty much a lot of different types of factions could easily form a colony there, to really have some sort of, you know, minor faction areas there, just to have a little bit more of a mix every now and then, because having some variety is useful, even if they're just minor factions, you'd be amazed how having a palate cleanser does for you when you're doing a long campaign. Hell, to be honest, yeah, this country could really not be added in. Uh, I don't see a point unless there's plans for the future, because Games Workshop clearly do have plans. A lot of really obscure places are getting mentioned recently through Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 2, and those areas have to be approved by Games Workshop when they're mentioned. So, yeah, it's possible. The last thing is obviously uh, Lumbria, but Lumbria is unmapped as far as I'm aware. Like, just physically never existed in a Warhammer Fantasy map. And uh, yeah, you could probably hear my cats going insane today, I don't know why. But yeah, with everything that we've seen, I think this is realistic. I don't think that we're going to get this anytime soon. This is probably going to be a few years until we can actually get this. Uh, I feel like maybe Ind and Koresh will be next year, like one or the other, and I honestly do think that we will see big changes to the map in the future, but it will have to be once a year in this case, maybe once every year and a half. Because more or less what I've been thinking is we're likely to get a race pack every year or year and a half. That's of course very dependent on the fact if the game stays popular, but I imagine that it's going to be doing fine. Actually had a pretty decent rise since Immortal Empires became free, uh, so you don't actually need to own the other two other games. With more content, Chaos Dwarves in the Horizon, that was pretty much confirmed with the teaser and Games Workshop outright saying, oh look, an update to Immortal Empires and Chaos Dwarves soon. So after that, next year, end. Maybe Koresh? You never know. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about this. I know it's just a fan map, but it's wishful thinking, I think, more than anything else. But I hope so, and I do honestly believe that this is possible. I honestly believe that this can be possible with enough time, with enough dedication, with enough support to the game. But yeah, let me know what you think, and let's start a bit of discussion. Until then, have a nice day, guys.